This week's movie, Who Am I? Following my mother's death, I am passed on to stay with my aunt and uncle and meet my estranged cousin at the same time. My new friendship turns sour after he shows concerning behaviour of a violent nature. Stay tuned to find out. You're listening to the Banana Reel Movie Podcast, episode 48. Warning, this podcast contains spoilers and coarse language, so you've been forewarned. Hey folks, we are the Theta Grillers. My name is Carlos. I'm Dan. And normally there's Heath joining us, but for this week, it's just us two. Yeah. Nice and cosy. Yeah. So each and every fortnight, we get together and we discuss a film that we've seen Mm -hmm. in whatever detail, shape or form it happens to strike us. But before we get into that, we'll get the usual stuff out of the way. So you can reach us. If you want to send us an email, you can do it so by email, which... That sounds redundant. You can use any email program you have. You know, you can do it online. You can do it through Outlook, uh, Thunderbird if you're a Mozilla fan. Wow. That's going back. Yeah. And essentially the takeaway is the email email address. Yes. Which is? Which is theatergrillers at gmail.com, spelt the UK English way. Yes. Now, if you want to get to us via other social media outlets, um, social networking outlets, I should say, Mm -hmm. you can do so... just simply and easily at Theta Gorillas at uh, blah, 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 blah. you can do so quickly and easily <laughs> at theatergorillas.com. Jesus Christ, what's wrong with yeah. you? Yeah. Just go to theatergorillas.com, all right? Yeah. Spell any way. You can do it yeah. the UK or the American way and it'll get you there. Yeah. So and, and from we'll there we've got yeah, we've got links and you can go into the various ways of finding us. Yeah. So but of course rate and subscribe because it helps. Yeah, definitely. And uh we've we've now got video on YouTube as well. I know, it's so if weird. you're listening to the podcast, yeah, head over to YouTube yeah, and I, you I've, can see our ugly faces. I'm trying not to look down the barrel. <laughs> anyway, um mm. yeah, so before we get into it, we are looking this week at Night Special. Night Special. Night Special. Night Special. Night Special. Directed by Jeff Nichols. Yes. And written by Jeff Nichols. Yeah. Now, we had a quick look at this, and um, he hasn't done a great deal, but what he has done has some kind of a claim. Right, yeah. So You're he, saying he did Mud with yeah, he Matthew ri- McConaughey. Yeah, he wrote and directed Mud. Right. So, and I have seen bits of it. I haven't been able to get into the whole thing of Mud. Yeah. But a lot of people love it. Right, So. Okay. yeah. Um, I might give it another go. I don't know. I don't know if I can handle it again. But yeah, fair enough. It's a movie that's not this one. So right, yeah. yeah. So, anyway, so the progeny of this one is it. It sort of came out of left field a little, didn't it? Like it didn't. It didn't release to a wide theatrical uh, release. There not wasn't to a wide my knowledge. Release. No. Um, so yeah, and I mean, I guess this is the way a lot of a lot of movies these days are going. Uh, going down this route of sort of almost indie sort of releases, you know, like they push hard for the the uh, the streaming and the, the digital downloads yeah, as opposed to a large theatrical See, release. I'm, I'm looking you know, at the, the rough box office figures here. Okay. And I mean, the yeah. budget was $18 million, yeah, which yeah. is substantial, but it's not a huge amount. Relatively modest, yeah. yeah. And uh, opening weekend in the USA was only 190000 Right, okay. So either they didn't market it properly or it was never intended to be that. It was always intended to, to find a cult audience at a later point. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, and, and gross is only $3 million as of 20th of May. Yeah, so it so, sounds like they're definitely aiming more for the, the digital download yeah, streaming market. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I, think, I think it's kind of like in the fashion of, um, I don't know if you've seen the movie Blue Ruin. and Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so that director yeah. is... He has a, a nice following, and most of his movies have a short window of release in theaters. Yeah, but most of it is like the afterthought. Yeah, and getting right. the word out that way. Okay, yeah. so I think it's I've got a feeling it's a bit of that going on here. Yeah, fair enough. So yeah. this movie in particular, the concept of the story is real relatively simple. Yeah, yeah. We have we have a child that has strange abilities. Or mm-hmm. powers, if you want to say. And the father of this kid is yeah. trying to keep him away from where they've come from and from authorities. Yeah, yeah. Um, 
So what I did like about this was was sort of that cold open approach they took. So you sort of you're straight in the action from the get go. Yeah. And they don't necessarily establish too much of the background as to why they're on the run. And they never even really reconcile that even towards the end. No. Like as to why they were running away from the, where they started. Yeah. So they're, yeah, they're is... running away from what looks like a cult. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, one of those uh, church cults that lock themselves away in a building yeah, and so your, forth. Your David Koresh yeah. style. And so yeah. that's all we've got to go on. And mm. it's this this church sermon that obviously this pastor has like really gotten into these people yeah and this kid was born under under their roof at some point mm-hmm. and was being raised by them and obviously the parents wanted to get him out because they they see their child suffering under this yeah yeah and mind you the child was was actually taken from the father and raised by the pastor of the church I missed well. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's a couple of lines where they establish that. And, um, uh, uh, the, the chick, Kirsten Dunst's character, yeah. says to their, their friend played by Joel Edgerton that it was tough for, for Ray to see his son being raised by another man for uh, the first two years of his life. Actually, I do remember now. Yeah, yeah. So there was this whole element of, I guess, obviously the pastor had realised his powers and then gone, well, there's something here, you yeah. know, and sort of, I mean, in the way that cults like that do, you know, like there's always some questionable moral, always. ethical sort of always. developments. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the first time you realise it's really a cult is when they're, the first time you're actually shown them as well. Yes. Yeah. But you don't realise at first. You think he's just, it's a general meeting. And then yeah. when he goes out to do his preach sermon, mm-hmm. you realise when the FBI are making their raid. Yeah. Well, for me, the giveaway was the clothing the women were wearing. It oh, was really? very, uh, uh, the, the Australian equivalent would be the, uh, what do they call them? The, the chosen brethren or the... I have no Brethren idea. Brethren Brotherhood or something. Right. Yes, very prim, proper, sort of not showing any skin below the, the neckline, full-sleeved uh, shirts. Oh, right. So for me, that was the first giveaway that they, they were a cultish sort of organisation. But you're right. And then the FBI comes in. So what gave it away for me was the fact that the FBI was cutting <laughs> locks <laughs> off the gates. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, tends that, to be any time the, the FBI interrupt a meeting like that, you in know. In full force. Yeah. yeah. So, you know there's a, a, a sort of perverted cultish sort of uh, basis for the for yeah. whatever it is. And what what I find interesting as well is throughout the entire progression of the movie, yeah. we've we've got this sense of threat from them. Mm-hmm. But aside from the fact that this boy, all they've taken from this boy is the fact that he's spat out GPS coordinates. Yes, yeah. And he's throwing it into this into the sermon. Mm. Aside from that, we have no real understanding as to why they really want to hold on to this kid. Well, remember, it's the eye thing. But Because when they first meet up with that guy, he's like, I wanted to see it again. So he'd obviously done it previously when right. he was still living with them. Okay. Yeah. Aside from that, though, like, but what yeah. does it do for people? You're right. Yeah, yeah. And that's one problem I sort of had throughout this movie. Like, with a movie like this, if you're going to start with a cold open like that, right, Um you you just set up where where the individual um, players are, where they're going, and the idea generally is by the end of the movie you come through exposition to reveal all the details you need, you yeah. know, to to piece together the story. But I feel like there was never quite that payoff here. No, like you said, nothing's ever really resolved too well. No, and and aside from that, like we've got the authorities after them, and yeah. I can only imagine that they're after them because the church has perhaps leaked information that. The father has kidnapped the boy, but without yeah. saying that he's the father. Well, and then the FBI were after them because of the coordinates that he'd somehow leaked in the sermons that turned out to be ultra top secret. Yeah, CIA fucking yeah, that, coordinates. So that's the only reason why the NSA are after him. Yeah, but aside from that, like it takes a while to get to that point. Right? Yeah, yeah. And so for the the first probably half an hour, forty minutes of the film. Mm-hmm. None of that is revealed. No, it takes a it. long time to sort of get there. Yeah, yeah. But in saying that, the tension that they're building yeah. throughout the, the movie at that point is actually really good. Yeah, definitely. I must say like for the first, I would say even like the first 75% of this film, I was really hooked. You know, like I thought that was a really clever way to do it. Sort of cold open, you slowly reveal details as it goes on. Like the initial premise is, yeah, there's a kid. 
uh, with two guys and they're running from the authorities, they're running from the church, you know? So it's really compelling from the get-go, you yeah. know? Like you're thrown straight in the middle of the action. It's like, all right, something's happening here. We're going to work it out as we sort of progress through yeah. the story. And I mean, like, like certain yeah. characters as well, like Joel Edgerton's character is Lucas. Yeah. Fantastic. I love it. He's just yeah. this sh- this soldier that believes in the kid and the rights of the kid. Yeah. Well, and state we- trooper. Yeah, is he a state trooper? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, right, yeah. yeah. See, I thought he was a part of the cult. Ah, right, okay, yeah, yeah. And I thought, I thought what he wanted was what was for the best of this kid yeah. in helping the dad because they had a relationship together. But it turns mm. out, no, that's not the case. Yeah, no, it was, it was simply the fact that the father called on him. They used to be um, friends as kids. The right. father came to him one day and said, hey, shit's hit the fan, so I need So much help. just went flying over my head. Yeah. During this movie because it as well, everything that gets revealed is so quick. Yeah, yeah. And it doesn't stay on it for long. It just it just keeps moving forward. Yeah. Which generally is what happens in a f- movie. But True. Yeah, see, which is fair if you're coming to some sort of a conclusion, you know, some sort of satisfying conclusion. And we'll, we'll get there. We'll work our way towards that. But um, yeah, yeah. So up until a certain point, it was it was valid to sort of reveal information like that, but yeah. you expect a bigger payoff, you know. I ex- well for me as soon as like because there was mention of what he could do with his eyes, yeah, through the FBI investigation of the interrogation of the the people from the church, right? Yeah, and so we we are there to understand that this kid is capable of doing things aside from just knowing things, yeah, um, and when we actually see it for the first time Mm -hmm. i was expecting some kind of answer to come from it right yeah but instead it's just like no you shouldn't be doing that okay now it's time to pack up and go yeah yeah that's it so we should explain at this point so the first time uh the kid actually reveals his powers is when um lucas and is it roy or ray the father yeah it's uh, Roy. Roy. So Lucas and Roy have taken him to the first of which is presumably uh, a series of safe houses they've organised uh, yeah. on their way to get to this this ultimate goal. Um, they go to sleep or they, they tune out, uh, you know, take some time to rest and they wake up to uh, what seems like an earthquake and it's the guy whose safe house they're in is in the room with the boy and has this weird, yeah, light thing going on with his eyes. Yeah. And that's the first time you actually, yeah, it's, it's actually revealed the what – his eyes can do because before then he's always wearing goggles when he's out anywhere that yeah, there might be light or anything. And- yeah, yeah. See, like there's something to that. And yeah, but then they show it and then it's like, well, you're no longer with us. You know, uh, Roy was ready to kill the guy and they, they just moved on without really explaining what happened there. Yeah, and what does it do to the kid when people do that? Yeah, yeah. Because, I mean, the house was falling apart. Like the, the wall fell down. Like Yeah. Yeah, and it was like, well, Why? Like, and all the sunlight was getting in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like, okay, well, why? And like is it the, the other thing is like the, they keep this part of the title of the movie is Midnight, right? So yeah. they constantly keep this kid in the dark. They, yes, they're afraid yeah. to get him into the light because of yeah. what could potentially happen to him. Mm-hmm. And it's interesting when later down the track you realise what the significance of the sunlight actually is for him. Yeah that I, f- I find, like, a nice turnaround and, and so forth. But until then, like, all these people want this kid for what he's got. Yeah. But they, aside from over time you see the kid being, uh, his health is degrading mm-hmm. over time because he's away from sunlight. Aside yeah. from that, we have no no sort of understanding of if if I was to gaze down his eyes and absorb all that light coming out of it, what happens to me and what happens to him? Yeah, yeah. And and yeah, that's so something you, that I would have liked to to know a little bit more. Yeah, definitely. Especially because the act of looking into somebody else's eyes seems to have drained him, you know, physically yeah. more so than than being away from sunlight. And considering, like, one theory I've got, I have no idea if this is the case or not, but. Mm. The fact is the the kid knows things that just shouldn't be known. Yeah. Like so yeah, he has an innate and... ability to sort of absorb, I don't know, radio waves or things that are coming from satellites and stuff shit. Stuff like, like that. Like yeah. he just he's aware of people's names and what they're doing and certain events that potentially can happen sooner or later. Yeah. 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 And 
he just has like this sixth sense of what's going on around him as well. Yeah. And I wonder if when people look into his eyes, they're actually seeing glimpses of the future uh, along with maybe the past or something like that. Yeah, okay. Yeah, and yeah. I think that's what is the allure of it's not just the fact that there's this bright, blinding light. Yeah. I wonder if it's the fact that there is something enticing to seeing what is coming out of that. Yeah, there, has, there absolutely has to be something, yeah, alluring about it. But, yeah, it's never really sort of explained no. what it is or, or how it came to be. Yeah. Um, and one thing that that sort of got me all the way through is, all right, so they're, they're running away from the church, right? Mm-hmm. They're trying to get away from the church and get to this place that they're meant to be at a certain time. Yeah. This is the whole conceit about it. That's why they're running. They want, they have to get to this place on Friday, March 6th or something yeah. at, a, at a certain time. It's like, well, then why did they leave the church? Because if the church knew the date and uh, they didn't know the place, but the church believes that this boy is going to bring them to salvation, wouldn't the church, like, wouldn't their main motivation be to get him to this place and time? You would assume so. Like, I don't see why they're fighting against the church in that capacity. Well, I think, it's, capacity. I think it's the mere fact that they ran away in the first place. Right, okay. And yeah. obviously the, the pastor of the church is looking out for his best interests. Yeah, yeah. Uh, not, uh, and perhaps not... there's an argument to be made that, you know, they, they had an inkling that the FBI was coming for them. The kid might have tipped them off. Maybe. Said, hey, by the way, if we stay here, yeah. It's not going to happen. Potentially. It yeah. could be. And, yeah, but that was just another one of these things that was just sort of left floating in the but air. Here's, you know? here's the other thing. So the, the pastor has all these coordinates. So he's got like six to eight coordinates that the, the boy has spat out at various times. Yeah. The pastor has reason to believe that those coordinates mm-hmm. is where it's going to happen Yeah. in particular areas Mm -hmm. but as we find out later as the film progresses it's not where it's going to happen at all the boy the boy is misleading them Mm. all to get away probably and somehow miraculously the fbi agent uh played by kylo ren worked this all out when nobody else could as well now that's that's the thing so adam driver comes in out of nowhere and he's like super sleuth yeah yeah and he figures out that that it's it's all fake. Yeah, circles, they're not going to Atlanta, Georgia. No, yeah. and, and circles two coord two parts of a coordinate. Yes. and figures it out automatically. <laughs> yeah, it's like okay, can you can you lead us through that one because you've got me completely perplexed. Yeah, yeah. Hey, I mean, he he had an offhand comment um, when they they finally did meet up with him again. He's like, I worked it out. I know where you're going. It's like, but how exactly? It's such a shame because I love the pacing of most of the movie, you yeah. know, like it's this, this, uh, you know, uh, run, uh, run, this is escape from, you yeah. know, the world they're, they're, they're piling towards some sort of preordained coordinates, you know, they've got a job to do and yeah, yeah, it's, it feels really frantic and really sort of, um, suspenseful most of the way through, yeah. you know, eventually some guys from the church catch up with them, you know, and it's like. They almost, Which I did not see coming when the door opened. No, I didn't. That was that was. I actually stopped and said, "Holy shit!" Like yeah. when that happened. Yeah, yeah. Did Which not was, see it coming at all. Yeah. So all of it was very, really well paced, and it was really, you know, it was quite suspenseful. You were like, "All right, I really want to see how this this uh, uh, concludes," but then there just wasn't the payoff at the end. No, I didn't feel it either. Like I. What ended up changing, I think the moment that it changed was when the boy realises he's dying. Yeah. And he, unless he gets into the sunlight, mm-hmm. he's not going to survive. Yeah. Because he, he's starting to understand what he is. Yeah, yeah. And then at that point, he absorbs he absorbs the sunlight and this dome of energy sort of surrounds a small encompass around them. Yeah. Around him, he and his father. Mm. And when they get back to the hotel room, it's like really just thrown out there. Yeah. That which wasn't completely left field, but it did kind of feel that way as well. Well, see, what I didn't understand was like they've obviously spent most of his life trying to prevent him from seeing sunlight, but then all of a sudden sunlight heals him and makes him better. It's like, well, then... I don't understand why he was avoiding the sunlight all the time. I think it, I think it's the fear of... So, like, part of it when when he goes out there, his father's terrified, right? Yeah. But his son is saying it's going it's going to be okay. Yeah. yeah. I understand it now. It's going to be fine. To do this. Yeah. 
And I think part of the issue is that the absorption of the light is also painful. Okay. Because yeah. you see as he goes into the light, mm. his father is scared but his son's telling him like, it's fine, it's going to be fine. But as he yeah. starts to absorb it, he clutches his father tighter and tighter yeah, yeah. and sinks more and more into his chest. Mm. And to me that's more of a – it's it's a – what's the word I'm looking for? It's more of a instinctive reaction to yeah. trying to cower from pain, like try and yeah, okay. shield yeah. yourself from it. Mm. And I think that's the issue. I think he always feels like he's in pain when he's receiving the sunlight, but he needs that to progress to the next stage. Right, yeah. It's, yeah. it's kind of it's kind of like the whole metaphor of the the butterfly turn like the the caterpillar turning yeah turning yeah, yeah. into the butterfly, mm. and I think that's what it is because yeah, okay. once he's done that, you see when he's back at the hotel room, he's got full control of his powers now. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. So maybe that was yeah, yeah. It, he couldn't do it until he got but the to a certain point. Was the delivery sort of mechanism? Thing. Mm. So, and it could also who knows because it's not explained. It could also be the fact that it's a puberty thing. Maybe he was too young before. Yeah, perhaps. Actually, that's not a bad yeah angle. And now that he's a slightly older, like he's, I don't think he's really all that much in his teens. But no, yeah. But because he's slightly older, it could be that. Yeah, and it could even be the the fact that he's coming closer to you know this. The source as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. Well, this this time and date. Destination, you know? yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so one thing I found interesting was when when this whole sunrise shenanigans happens and this kid has rejuvenated himself and understands what he is, yep. is the reveal of why they're actually going there. And mm. the way the kid explains it is very, yeah. very intriguing. But I also feel that that is the point of which the movie sort of starts to feather Absolutely. And fall apart. Yeah, yeah. You know what I liken it to? I liken it to uh, the final Matrix movie. Yeah. You know, and then it's been building up to this grand revelation in the Matrix Matrix case over three movies. Yeah. You know, this this grand revelation that's meant to explain it all and then you finally get there and you're like, oh, he's just Jesus. Like, really? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, in this case, the, the kid in this is not Jesus. but. Right. It's the same sort of revelation, you know. You're sort of like, uh, right. really? That's just dumb. <laughs> <laughs> See, I I found, especially the moment that gets revealed, I found that this movie had a lot of sort of parallels to Powder. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's very, very similar sort of circumstance, especially at the end of the film. Yeah, true. Yeah. And I wonder if there was a bit of influence from that film to this one. Yeah, it's possible. But well, um, so we may as well address the elephant in the room and get to this. It's know, an elephant. Well, okay. It's, no, I get you. It's a uh, euphemism. Yeah, euphemism, uh, metaphor, I metaphor. Don't know. I think one of those things. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. The the ending. Ultimately, you know what it's all building up to. So we got this great, almost like a chase movie up to the first, uh, the the last sort of twenty minutes or so. You know, really suspenseful. Like they they're charging across the country. They slip up a couple of times. The, you know, the military is involved. Ooh, like the guys from the cult are after them. <laughs> but then, yeah, the kid comes back from rejuvenating under the sunlight and says, I feel like I'm, I'm, there, there's a world above ours and there's people that live there and I'm one of them. Yeah. That's his, his explanation. And that's ultimately what unfolds in that final scene. It's like there's, yeah, there's a secondary world above ours. Yeah. The way, the way he explained it that I can understand is that, there is a world that we can't see yeah. and they've built theirs on top of ours. Mm -hmm. That's the way I understood it. Yeah. And it's built on top of ours. Mm -hmm. So it makes me wonder. Yeah. The next lot of questions that start flooding my head is, are they what we interpret as ghosts? Okay, yeah. But then if they are, why do they have a hyper-futuristic -fut world, you know, which looks like they're they're drawing power from... You know, renewable I have, I energy can't explain, and stuff. I cannot explain that. But when we do yeah. see them in their natural form, yeah, they're like jellyfish. Yeah, yeah, they're like yeah, uh, amorphous beings of light or whatever. Yeah, yeah. So when I say jellyfish, all I mean is that they have no skin or anything like that. But they've yeah. got a figure of what looks like a body. Yeah, yeah. Walking around. Yeah, an indistinct figure. Yeah, yeah. And you can see energies of of like light patterns through them. Yeah, that yeah. sort of. 
Yeah. So, yeah. I. But then, meanwhile, they have this remarkable like civilization, you know, of like towering spires and you yeah. know, like greenery and shit. And it's like, how does that, you know, factor into this? Their the way they are as beings, like. See, for me, I, I figure that if we can't see them, then they are out of phase to okay. us yeah, yeah, in our reality. Sure. Yeah. But that doesn't mean that they can't interact with their phase. Mm-hmm. But I find it interesting also that they talk about that the world is built on top of ours, which means yeah. they can only build structures based on what we've left behind. Yeah, yeah, okay. That's yeah. why there's there's a couple of interesting sort of structures that they've got yeah. that are built on top of buildings. Oh, right, yeah, yeah. There's a couple that sort of intertwine, but most of them didn't. Most of them were freestanding. No, most of them were freestanding because obviously they don't want a building to collapse or something like that or be yeah. knocked down. Yeah. But there were a couple of structures that were attached to other structures. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah. So I found, I found their world interesting and very clean but yet also sterile with concrete. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I found it interesting but I didn't think it was particularly clever. I, it just felt like a cop-out, you know. A little bit. Yeah. Like, well, all right. I wouldn't a, have minded so much if maybe we saw more of their world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or you had one of them come and explain, you know, what the deal is. Because I don't understand why they necessarily have to have a world built above ours. And if they are these, like, intradimensional beings, why are they relying on Earth? You know, surely if they're that hyper-advanced, they would have you know, gone to the stars or something by now. It just seems really ham-fisted that they would Yeah, maybe they this. can't leave. But unless it, if things are explained to us, we don't know. We're completely hypothesized. And that's the problem. They never actually really come to any sort of conclusion there. It's just the kid wanders off and everybody's left to their own devices. The other thing I'm wondering Roy is... Roy gets put in prison and has fucking electrode, uh, electrodes. Like, yeah, I noticed his head. that. So he's probably been lobotomized or something. Potentially. Yeah. And Kirsten Dunst dyes her hair and runs off. Yeah, she's the only one that really gets away. Yeah. Like there was there was just no satisfying conclusion there. It's sort of like they got to the third act and they were like, oh, fuck it, we'll make it aliens. No, not aliens, like supernatural beings that exist. Now, on a this plane is the next question us. for me is no. how does the kid play into that? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, he's born of human parents. Like is that the only way that they can reproduce? And if so, surely this has happened before, you know. Which they then a... begs the question: Was Jesus the same? Oh God! If that's where they were you, going, you brought like, it up. Fuck those guys! <laughs> you brought it up, but like, yeah. really, when you think about it, like, if he is of another race but born of human parents, and is that considered? I suppose, immaculate? yeah, there is that sort of messianic element to it, isn't there? Only, the only difference is there's no, there's no. There's no link to the Bible in this case. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that doesn't mean it's not happened before. And like, but, but yeah. it, again, it just seems anomalous because they've already got an established civilization, right? Like, yeah, there's already presumably hundreds, if not thousands, of them living in this super world. Why did they have to have one kid? You know, born of human parents. It just it doesn't seem to fit. With no, it doesn't. Any sort of and narrative. That's that's where we need an explanation. And if the explanation was something along the lines of, "Look, he was there to deliver a message to you guys, so you can yeah. stop fighting or something like that." Then yeah, yeah. Fine. Tell mm. us that. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Give us that. Yeah. But, <laughs> but there's not anything there. The only thing by the end of the film, the only thing we are aware of is this kid needs to get there. Yeah. But he doesn't know why. Yeah. But when he gets there, or close to there... By the time he gets there, he's understood why. He realises he's not human. Yeah. And he wants to return from where he should be. Yeah. Which, uh, incidentally, is not from where he came because he was still... It was established he was born of human parents yeah, yeah. and raised for the first, what, six to eight years of his life as a human kid. Yeah. So, yeah, for me, that's where it all fell apart. And I mean... You know... After everything the father did to protect the, his son, yeah, they could have given him a better goodbye as well. Well, that's true. Yeah, they kind of shat on him there, didn't they? That really pissed me <laughs> off. It's like, okay, we've gone through a roadblock. Yeah. All right, we're 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 in a section where we're nice and quiet, you know, turns to his, his wife or ex-wife yeah. and says, you know, go and run. Yeah. And then they're, they're like 20, 30 metres down the way and then he's like, oh, shit, and then calls out to his son like it's, 
an yeah. a complete afterthought. Like, I'm not yeah. going to see him again. Yeah, yeah, exactly. There was a movie with um, Nicolas Cage um, probably about 10 years ago now. And it was a similar sort of idea. These two kids had to get to a place at a certain time. But the upshot of that was it turned out that aliens were coming down to take the children oh, the from knowing. Earth. The Knowing. There yeah, you go. I love that movie. See, it feels like this movie, and I mean, obviously, it, they couldn't have had exactly the same conclusion because they would have been ripping off The Knowing then. But it feels like that would have been a more logical way to end this movie. You know, like yeah. this kid has to be taken because he has a higher purpose. Not just, oh, because he's one of us and, you know, yeah, why I not? Mean, like, even if it was something like that, then have hmm. one of the elders of the race that he's supposed to be from yeah, come yeah. down and explain that to the mother. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, because everybody's left, like, they, they, their minds aren't blanked or anything. Everybody's left with the experiences of what happened yeah. when he was, you know, uh, when he transcended to whatever plane he's supposed to have come from. Yeah, but, exactly. Yeah, it was all just left to, to nothing. See, and you bring up The Knowing and now thinking about it in that sort of circumstance, The Knowing did a much better job of doing that. Exactly. Where yeah. they made you think the entire time it's going to be the end of the world and this is the only place that's going to be safe. Yeah. And it's been going on for generations mm -hmm. of the same woman being or, or the bloodline of this particular woman with that knowledge yeah. that this is all going to happen. And the payoff at the end is like kick, a severe kick in the teeth. Yeah. No, we would never – it was never for you. It was always for the children. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. But it was sort of – it was logically consistent. You get to that point you're like, you didn't see it coming, but you're like, ah, oh, But it okay. completely makes sense. That's We're, actually really clever. Yeah. Yeah. Whereas in, in this film, there's – there is that potential and it just doesn't get there. No, no. So like I said, you know, like the first 75 to 80 percent of this movie I really enjoyed. You know, the stakes were high. Yeah. It was well paced. You know, like you had a few different set pieces when they stopped off at different safe houses and stuff. Like it was all really ramping up to something significant. Yeah. All for it just to fall apart at the end. And it's like, oh, check out all these creepy buildings and shit. And, and so when. I'm just going to go. And when. One of my favorite bits in, in the whole movie is when it's, it's already after daylight has cured the boy. Yeah. And so the church have come along, they've kidnapped him back. Yeah. And they get stopped by the military because Adam Driver's figured out where they're going. Yeah. So he knows the immediate area they're going to be in. Yeah. And then... So like an army of, of choppers all around the area. Yeah. So been, and so... Yeah, the, spreading out. As, as the parents are trying to chase the truck down the, of the, the people from the church, yeah. they get stuck in like a, kind of like a roadblock sort of situation. Mm -hmm. And as they slowly drive along, they realise the truck that they were chasing has already been picked up by the military. Yeah. And you see a helicopter leave. Yeah. Presumably with a kid. And so later on you see the kid in a really sterilised room with yeah. cameras trained on him and the entire FBI, military, you name it, yeah. are trying to interrogate him. Mm -hmm. Now the moment that I absolutely love mm -hmm. is he asks to speak with Adam Driver's character. Yeah. And then when that happens... There is the flicker on the screen. Ah, uh, yes. And yeah. the image stays still. He and then stands up he's, and he's, the image stays. Yeah, he's completely focused on the image on the screen and then when he looks back over, the kid is standing up and yes. it's like showing what this kid can potentially do. Yeah. And the amount of knowledge he already has, like he already knows who he is. Mm. And that whole, just that visual representation of what the kid can do yeah. absolutely got me going. Yeah, that was neat. That was neat. Yeah. And, and the, like the, the fact that the kid could activate the keypad on the door yeah, yeah, yeah. without moving, without making a, a, any any flick of a wrist or anything like that, Yeah, I really wanted to see more of what this kid could do because yeah. right from that moment, I'm like the, the movie that I compared it to mm -hmm. was straight away. Now, I know a lot of people don't like this movie, but I, I actually do. And mm. it's, it's uh, The Day the Earth Stood Still. The original or the remake? The remake. Oh, okay. I haven't seen the remake because the original was one of the greatest uh, yes, classic science fiction that. movies of all time. Now, I've, I've got to re-watch the original because I cannot remember it. But right. at least with the remake with Keanu Reeves, mm. the way his character is interacting with technology and is able to sort of just think things so clearly... Yeah. The boy reminded me a lot of him. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. And the way he interacts with the world. 
Yeah, yeah. So I was thinking we're going to get a bit of that going on. Right, okay, yeah. But in the end, it uh, wasn't so that yeah, Maybe he was a, yeah, a messenger sent from from a, yeah. an alien civilization or something. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I hate to say it, but I just feel like aliens would have been a better explanation for what was going on here, you know? Potentially. Like, yeah, it's been done many a time before, but it would have made more sense than just supernatural beings See, who manifest some, one for the, one moment and one then One of the disappear. other things that I thought was going to happen was when the kid finally lets off the energy and yeah. that massive dome is created, yeah. two things I thought was going to happen. One, I thought the dome wasn't going to stop. Same, yeah, yeah. I thought the dome would eventually encompass the world and make everyone see this other world that they've been coexi- coexisting with. Because it grew a couple of times, huh? Like it grew the initial bloom... And then it came back to it a, a few minutes later and it was growing more. It was it was hitting the ocean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm with you there, yeah. I and was... I, thought, I thought that was going to continue. Yeah. And on top of that, I thought it would be a lasting effect. Yeah, yeah. But no. Mm. As soon as the kid is gone, the dome is gone. Yeah. And the effects of the dome is gone with it. Like, mm. So only, only maybe two, three hundred people, if, if that, that have yeah. seen what's out there mm. know what's going on. The rest of the world is completely oblivious. Yeah, exactly. And, yeah, so to what end was all that? And why did he have to be in that particular spot at that particular time for this to happen? Why, to? Could, why couldn't he just be where he was at any position? Exactly, yeah. If, if their world is above ours, presumably it's above all of our world. Yeah. You know, yeah. It's just so a shame, you know. It like, is. Yeah. It is because this movie is decent but it just feathers yeah, it's well shot, you know, like, and the special effects, they didn't, I don't think they needed to be too spectacular. They're, they were fine, you know, for what it was. It's basically just bright light, you know, it's very easy to do that and make it look somewhat yeah. convincing. But yeah, then it all just sort of falls down. It does. I think, mm. I think the main hero of this movie is actually the music. Okay, yeah. Um, because at the start of the film, like the cold opening, yeah, the only thing you've got is basically the roaring engine of the car that they're driving. Yeah, yep. And music that is very similar to the tone of the engine Mm -hmm. and because it's pulsating and it's sort of driving that momentous urge to get to where they're going. Yeah. And I think the music plays just a a huge part of this movie and I think it's the real hero of this movie. It's not the actors. Mm, Yeah. I think it's the, the, the mood setting of, of what's going on around them that actually pushes this movie to where it is. Yeah, I think that's fair. Yeah. So, which is a shame because I really wanted more in the story. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Mm. So, I don't know about you, but I'm ready to... Yeah, I think I think that's brought us uh, uh, full circle. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe I'll explode into a dome and disappear. <laughs> <laughs> we can only hope. <laughs> Oi. <laughs> All right. So, for me, technically this is a decent movie. Yeah. It's... You can tell that there is not a huge budget. It's not meant for as an action blockbuster or anything like that. Uh, it is a very condensed story and it is it feels like it's intended to be viewed as one. Mm-hmm. Um, the, the stuff that they tease you with, unfortunately, just don't have enough of a payout, mm-hmm. but it's enough to really keep you interested throughout the entire movie. And the fact that there is not... Even if even if it's a ham fisted explanation of, um, p- look, we we fucked up, and this kid should never have come to your world. It should have just stayed with us. Even if it was as jokingly dumb as that, <laughs> yeah, it was an it would be something. Yeah, <laughs> but it just doesn't happen. Hmm. Um, in saying that, the creepiness of the kid in knowing what he knows. Is cool, but yeah, there's just not enough there. So for me, I'm going to give this one two and a half bananas. Okay, I think that's fair. Um, yeah, I, I would mirror your comments uh, pretty much exactly. Uh, I mean, the performances were competent. I don't think in a in a movie like this, you're necessarily going to get much character exposition or anything. You know, it's very yeah. much a, a one beat sort of uh, story. So. Uh, you know, Roy, you got the impression that he was a caring father, Kirsten Dunn, same thing, mother. Uh, uh, Joel Edgerton, you know, was the mate who came along for the ride. So nothing really – I wouldn't particularly say any of the, the performances were outstanding. Yeah. Aside from the kid. The kid was suitably creepy. 
Yeah. Um, so it was more, yeah, what drove this movie was more this this idea of the unknown, you know, this whole idea it starts as a, as a chase and it's meant to come to something at the end. You know, that's ultimately what this movie is about is the twist in the third act. And like we've said, I just don't think it worked. You know, yeah. like it was unsatisfying. You got to it and it's like, oh, here's like all this cool shit that these guys are doing like on another plane and I'm just going to go join them and that's it. And, like, the, and the only thing you see is just a couple of skyscrapers. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And there's there's no other sort of uh, payoff but for that. He goes, joins his people again and the rest of the world is just left to its own devices. Yeah. You know, like we said, Roy is, is imprisoned with electrodes in his head so he's probably been fucking lobotomized or something. Yeah. Yeah, so... 75% of the way through this movie, I was like, this is really cool. I'm digging it. And then it, it unraveled, yeah, quite quite significantly. So I would probably, you know what? I'm going to say two bananas for the ending alone. Really? Yeah. Okay. Two bananas. So, yeah, it's, it's in that range of if it's on midday TV and you're hungover on a Saturday, watch it. But don't go out of your way to to find this and, and yeah. digest it. I, it's just not worth your time. Go see what did you say? The Knowing instead, or yeah. Powder, or Powder. Yeah, Powder Powder's are, a beautiful movie. Both are much better movies. Yeah, um, yeah. So yeah, that's it. It's a shame. Yeah. It had a lot of potential. Mm-hmm. Anyway, we are the Theater Grillers, and that was our discussion on Midnight Special. So Isn't stay it? tuned for the end of the theme song if you want to find out what this week's movie Who Am, Who Am I is. Otherwise, we'll see you in a fortnight. Ciao. See ya. And you stayed on to find out what this week's movie, Who Am I, is. And it is The Good Son. Oh, yes. Starring a very, very young Elijah Wood and Macaulay Culkin. Ah, I'd almost forgotten that Elijah Wood was in that, actually. And I've got a feeling he was, he was the good son, wasn't he? Really? Because Macaulay Culkin was the bad yeah, son. Yeah, true. Ultimately. True. And oh, spoilers. Well, <laughs> it's the whole premise of the movie, really. Well, that's true. Yeah. But uh, I think what is a spoiler, which I just, I've just i got to say, is the choice that the mother makes at the end. Yeah, true, true. Yeah. Um, the uh, I can't quite remember. Was this the last movie that Macaulay Culkin did before he disappeared? See, I want to say this is the last significant movie he did that anybody paid any attention to or gave him any higher claim for. Or was I feel it like Richie he, Rich? He did do, oh, no, this was definitely after Richie Rich. Was it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. Richie Rich was still his his child actor, you know, his his good persona sort of right, thing. Right, right. I feel like The Good Son was him trying to break out into more serious acting. But, yeah, he did a couple of things after that, and but nothing, I think, of real note. I think I remember, I can't remember whether it was with Elijah Wood or it was with maybe Seth Green or something, but mm. Macaulay Culkin did try some another movie that he completely funded himself at a later point, oh, not only okay. a few years back. Yeah. Um, see if I can quickly find it. Uh, probably not. But, yeah, I think ultimately that was that was the last of the big Hollywood movies he, he's been notable for. It'll take me a while to find it. But, yeah, no, definitely. Yeah. Good Son came out of nowhere. It was marketed as a really full-on thriller, and it really yeah. is. Yeah. It, like, it holds up to what it what it aimed to be. Yeah, definitely. Mind you, I will have to go back and watch it now because the I shine have... of nostalgia may may affect us in the same oh, way it did it. with Tank Girl. So. Fuck it. it. I mean, it's Hopefully very possible that it's a, it's a terrible movie by yeah, now, yeah. by today's standards. But for the time that it came out, yeah. I remember it, enjoying it thoroughly. I remember being young when this came out too. And true, it really, true. I mean, it's 1993 this came out. Yeah, right. Oh, and God, I would have been 10 at the time. Yeah, I just started high school or I was one year out from high school. Right, yeah. So, man, like the mm. the fact that a friend could be as sinister as that, like yeah, scared the shit out of me and I started watching all my friends very closely. <laughs> <laughs> That's the moment you lost faith in the human condition yep right what are you still doing here <laughs> <laughs> anyway all right folks well that's your homework for next week or yep. next fortnight go watch the good song again and let us know whether it holds up yeah totally mm. so hit us up on our various social medias that you can find out by, by going to our website theatergrillers.com spelled either the english or american way exacto mundo damn straight all right <laughs> see you in a fortnight guys see ya bye 
podcast is recorded and produced by Theatre Gorillas. Edited by Dan Clark. Uh,